My dear Eliza, I have been within the verges of the gates of death. I was ill the last time I wrote to you and apprehensive of what would be the consequence. My fears were but too well founded, for in ten minutes after I dispatched my letter, this poor, fine-spun frame of Yorick's gave way, and I broke a vessel in my breast, and could not stop the loss of blood till four this morning. I have filled all thy India handkerchiefs with it. It came, I think, from the heart. I fell asleep through weakness at six, and awoke with the bosom of my shirt steeped in tears. I dreamed I was sitting under the canopy of indolence, and that thou camest into the room with a shawl in thy hand, and told me my spirit had flown to thee to the downs with tidings of my fate, and that you was come to administer what consolation filial affection could bestow, and to receive my parting breath and blessings. With that you folded the shawl about my waist, and kneeling, supplicated my attention. I woke, but in what a frame! Oh my God, but thou wilt number my tears and put them all into thy bottle. Dear girl, I see thee, thou art for ever present to my fancy, embracing my feeble knees and raising thy fine eyes to bid me be of comfort. And when I talk to Lydia, the words of Esau, as uttered by thee, perpetually ring in my ears. Bless me, even also my father. Blessings attend thee, thou child of my heart. My bleeding is quite stopped, and I feel the principle of life strong within me, so be not alarmed, Eliza. I know I shall do well. I have eaten my breakfast with hunger, and I write to thee with a pleasure arising from that prophetic impression in my imagination that all will terminate to our heart's content. Comfort thyself eternally with this persuasion, that the best of beings, as thou sweetly hast expressed it, could not, by a combination of accidents, produce such a chain of events merely to be the source of misery to the leading person engaged in them. The observation was very applicable, very good, and very elegantly expressed. I wish my memory did justice to the wording of it. Who taught you the art of writing so sweetly, Eliza? You absolutely have exalted it to a science. When I am in want of ready cash and ill health will permit my genius to exert itself, I shall print your letters as finished essays by an unfortunate Indian lady. The style is new and would almost be a sufficient recommendation for their selling well, without merit. But their sense, natural ease, and spirit is not to be equalled, I believe, in this section of the globe, nor, I'll answer for it, by any of your countrywomen in yours. I have showed your letter to Mrs. B, and to half the literati in town. You shall not be angry with me for it, because I meant to do you honour by it. You cannot imagine how many admirers your epistolary productions have gained you that never viewed your external merits. I only wonder where thou couldst acquire thy graces, thy goodness, thy accomplishments, so connected, so educated. Nature has surely studied to make thee her peculiar care, for thou art, and not in my eyes alone, the best and fairest of all her works. And so this is the last letter thou art to receive from me, because the Earl of Chatham, I read in the papers, is got to the downs, and the wind, I find, is fair. If so, blessed woman, take my last, last farewell. Cherish the remembrance of me. Think how I esteem, nay, how affectionately I love thee, and what a price I set upon thee. Adieu, adieu. And with my adieu, let me give thee one short rule of conduct that thou hast heard from my lips in a thousand forms, but I consenter it in one word. Reverence thyself. Adieu once again, Eliza. May no anguish of heart plant a wrinkle upon thy face till I behold it again. May no doubt or misgivings disturb the serenity of thy mind or awaken a painful thought about thy children, for they are Yorick's, and Yorick is thy friend for ever. Adieu, adieu, adieu. P.S. Remember that hope shortens all journeys by sweetening them. 
so sing my little stanza on the subject with the devotion of an hymn. Every morning thou arisest, and thou wilt eat thy breakfast with more comfort for it. Blessings, rest, and hygieia go with thee. Mayst thou soon return in peace and affluence to illumine my night. I am and shall be the last to deplore thy loss, and will be the first to congratulate and hail thy return. Fare thee well. <laughs>